We're here in Puerto Rico, hunting creatures that should not be. Things no sane God would allow, and we're on the track of them, and we're going to get them. <laughs> Nick, the rain is out of schedule. It's out of schedule. You're right. It's one hour early. Okay. Yeah, because it always rains in Mayagüez at 1.30 p.m. <laughs> and not at 12.30. Okay. Well, I like it. Reminds me of England. <laughs> <laughs> First time you ever heard of the chupacabra? Right? First time I ever heard of chupacabras? Yeah, probably, probably about 1995, I think, in maybe Graham Birdsell's UFO magazine back in England, and uh, they did a feature about this weird animal, which I'm not even sure at the time they were calling it the chupacabras, but just reported on various attacks and the fact that animals are being killed in weird circumstances, and it was actually seen in conjunction with uh, UFO reports and. I remember some of the early reports were actually in conjunction with objects coming out the sea in the vicinity of Puerto Rico and there are all sorts of weird stories about alien bases on the island and it was sort of a you know, weird time, this is probably early 90s, something like that and uh, you know, it kind of really took off and took hold you know, in the mythology of not just that it was a weird animal but in terms of expanding the whole UFO subject even further if you like in terms of you know this was a new completely new angle that really hadn't been touched upon before and then from there we got linked with cattle mutilations and then you know just took off and had a life of its own which I think still continues to this day. Yeah, where we are now in the old Yonkey rainforest, this is sort of one of the prime locations where there's been a lot of chupacabras encounters. And um, I've actually interviewed several people myself who late at night have seen it actually crossing the road um, in the rainforest. And, you know, these people don't seem to know each other. They're all independent accounts. So, you know, in that respect, it's kind of credible and incredible at the same time, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of looking for any little trinkets and ornaments that... Uh, of blood sucking monsters, so uh, I'll see what I can find. Do they have any chupacabra, Orlando? Chupacabras? No, yeah. they don't have any chupacabras. They're out of t shirts. Uh, so what about the real thing? The real thing. ¿Has visto por aquí chupacabra? Eh, no. No. Oh, he only says. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ugly people look look like chupacabras. <laughs> uh, is this the place where we might find the where there's stories of the chupacabra there in this area? Well, what we're gonna do here that I'm going to tell the story of uh, a theory that evolved ten years ago that they said that the chupacabras came out of a junque because it escaped from a laboratory. It was part of an experiment, and Hurricane Hugo destroyed the laboratory, and then the chupacabra escaped to Canovanas. Here I am. I'm surrounded by aliens in the Puerto Rican rainforest, but they're kind of wooden. They're not really talking to me or doing anything other than just kind of standing here, which... Uh, it's kind of disappointing. I've come all this way and they're just ignoring me. But uh, I guess that's one of the hazards of a UFO hunter and a chupacabra hunter. You just don't get friendly aliens. And uh, never mind. And I didn't even find anything of interest in the shop to buy chupacabras related. So, uh, but I'm going to continue to search. On to the next spot then. On to the next one. Estamos aquí está haciendo un documental del chupacabra. ¿Tú no has visto por aquí? No. Chupacabra, yo nunca he visto un chupacabra. No. So, uh, your answer? Yes or no? No, no, she has never seen a chupacabra. No. <laughs> Maybe we have more luck next time. We are at one of the tourist sites of the chupacabras uh, at El Yunque. As you can see, we have a chupacabras uh, between us. You can see the horns, you can see the long tongue, you can see the reptile skin, and you can see the bat-like uh, wings. Now, many years ago, here at El Junque, 
People said that they saw a creature just like the chupacabra up around the jungle. Today it is used uh, for tourist purposes and to, s to sell t-shirts. Uh, what do you think, Nick? Well, I guess I came here looking for the chupacabras and actually found one of a sort at least, although this guy seems a little bit wooden. Um, you know, I expected this blood-sucking creature from hell and he's kind of sold himself out to the tourist industry and just posing for, for photographs like everybody else, unfortunately, for the mighty dollar. So uh, I've kind of lost my faith and trust in the chupacabras as this diabolical creature from hell and I guess, like all of us, he's just sold his soul. I guess so. He looks kind of friendly. He has a big smile. He does look kind of friendly. Although those breasts of yours look far more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I am the lady with the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, painting, Orlando, that we're kind of ridiculously posing between, does it look realistic? Is it, you know, sort of comparable with what people are talking about actually seeing? It's a little bit weathered away. But it's one of the... Uh, classic representations of the UFO, uh, I mean of the chupacabra phenomenon in Puerto Rico. A creature uh, with wings, bat-like wings, right. claws, and a reptile skin with some hair. Okay. So it really has some similarities with what investigators mm -hmm. have in their sketches. Okay, so we may have, we've kind of seen the chupacabras up close and personal, but uh, hopefully we might even find the uh, the flesh and blood one as well, and uh, if we could get this close to him, that would be a major scoop. If a search or an expedition for the creature was undertaken, what chance would they actually have to find it in a forest of this size and, and density? Well, this is a tropical forest. It is very dense. You cannot walk through the forest unless you have a machete. Mm. The chupacabra can hide in a forest as this one and would never be found. Okay. Now, the skeptical view of this theory is that there is not enough food in El Junque to feed a creature of this size. Mm -hmm. Therefore, according to scientists, it is impossible for a creature like this to exist at El Junque because there is not enough food for it. Right. Now, for the chupacabra believer, since it can fly very far away, it only has to go to the next town, mm -hmm. attack the animals, suck their blood, and then it will return okay. to the rainforest. Mm -hmm. For the, to the safety and, and cover of the trees. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you give me an example, Orlando, of an encounter or a sighting of the Chupacabras within the El Yunque rainforest? Well, Nick, in the eastern face of El Yunque, there is a mall sector called Barrio Desvío. There, a winged creature that was described in the newspaper that had the face of a human, but it had wings and it was about five feet tall, mm -hmm. killed about 15 rabbits. It split them in half and it took out the skin and just left the body in the ground and the skin of the rabbit was lying five or six feet away. So yes, there are cases along El Junque which people have been attacked by what they call the chupacabras or they have seen what they interpret as the chupacabras. Yeah, I guess, you know, if the chupacabras really does look like this, then you wouldn't stand much of a chance in, in a battle with it. <laughs> it's kind of a cross between aliens, predator and Godzilla. It's, uh, I wouldn't mind meeting it up close just to sort of say I'd met it and then uh, get out the area fast maybe after I'd clobbered it and captured the corpse and uh, sold it to the press for a million dollars. 